Hallway 11. Hallway 11. Hallway 11. <laughs> Too slow, butt monkey. Hey team, how are we going? It is Kaz from In The Trenches with Kaz and I am here today, take 37, to let you know that I have a message. A simple message to those that are going to Kapooka, the home of the Australian soldier, male or female, to let you know that you can't fail. You can't. How can you fail when you have already academically been screened for your IQ through problem solving, capability, aptitude testing, and then through medical to make sure there's no hiccups, no surprises, nothing wrong with your skeletal system or your internals or your eyes or your ears. And then you've been given a psychological testing to make sure you're a nutter and you're able to take the prolonged punishment of being exposed to a world so opposite to the one that you live in at the moment. 11 platoon, I am Sergeant Caswell, but you can call me Sergeant Caswell or Dad or God. Whichever you choose. Or just don't call me at all. Because I won't answer. We've got section commanders for that. And then after all that, you've done a PFA, your pre-enlistment fitness assessment, to see that you are physically able to meet the rock bottom standard that every individual, sort of, has to meet. You can't fail. But you're also not special. You're here as a team member, you start, you get on a bus with 100 points. It's up to you to keep those points. You're part of a herd, you're part of a nest, you're part of a hive, you're part of a crowd. But everyone there is a volunteer and they came for the same reason as you to be an Australian soldier in the best small army in the world. So my message to you is you cannot fail. How could you? Unless it's attitude. The only way outside a spiral fracture of the lower limb injury. Hmm. Or realising that maybe I'm not a soldier at all and maybe I could have been a sailor. I've been watching you. Corporal, let me get behind you and show you what I mean. <laughs> Team, if there is a such thing as a silver bullet, the cure-all for Kapuka, that would be the word attitude. Maintain a good attitude, a mature attitude, understand when you're getting yelled at, it's probably because you've done something wrong and you haven't met a time, you haven't met a uh, end state, even if it wasn't achievable. Get in and give me a thousand. It's designed to knit you together as a team against the commander. Remember that sense of urgency is required by all. Move now. Hallway 11. Hallway 12. Didn't make it. Not quick enough. Shh, do it again. There's no anger behind the yelling. It's to instill a sense of urgency. That's all it's about. Eat that Brussels sprout. Have a good attitude. Know when to laugh, but don't get caught laughing. Have pictures on your notice board of a beautiful woman you've never met. Is that your mum? Is she coming to march here? Not bad recruit. The instructors won't know that. A picture of a dog. A picture of your family. A picture of a beautiful car or a motorbike. Make yourself a human being, not just a PMK's number, 8254341, that's mine, for life. Attitude. Have a good time, the best time that you can have. Have a silent laugh when your mates fail and get their ass kicked, and then you can have a laugh about it later, because that's where stories are born. The bad times, not the good times. You think you're cold now? Wait till you get divorced. Attitude. And when you see someone else got a bad attitude, let them know, give them a bit of counselling. Because if you don't, and the instructors have to, whoop, whoop, they might be walking out the door, back squad. And that's your worst nightmare. As someone going through as a recruit in the home of the Australian soldier, Kapuka. Hmm. So team, let's move on from there. Within your platoon, whether it be 11 platoon, 12 platoon, hallway three you'll be required to bond with a team of individuals that you wouldn't normally hang around with. Look outside team, forecast is rain for the next 10 days. Mmm, beautiful. If it ain't raining, it ain't training. There is going to be whoop, a bell curve of individuals, those least likely, most likely, that you would normally call buddy. Makes no difference. Hodgepot put together you're going to make the casserole of all these individuals within this platoon in the smallest tactical organisation outside the fire team called a section. You're going to have a section allocation within there. You'll have a battle buddy. That battle buddy, you do not get to choose and they will be across from you. You'll hold the shield high for them. They'll hold it for you, maybe. But there's always going to be a bell curve within the section of these that are the slowest, that those are the most emotional those that have the least amount of capability. I've seen better shots on red tube. Those that are the most selfish. 
Did you get hurt doing PT or is that the way you look? Childish, etc. But you have to travel at the speed of that person until either they get their skills up or they're back squirted. So we travel at the speed of the least capable. That's what we do. In doing that, that makes a mutual enemy of the commander, the instructor, and allows you to knit together in a essential team to leave the cave to kill the saber-toothed tiger for dinner where you don't get to choose who goes. You've just got to get the mission done. So it's important for you to be the best person at Kapuka so that you are not the speed that your section is traveling at. This will make a hell of a lot of sense, a lot of sense, when you actually get to Kapuka and you see the people that you'll be traveling at the speed of. And you've got to give them mercy, you've got to give them a chance, despite the fact that they didn't give themselves a fighting chance from the start, right? In the trenches with Kaz. When in doubt, follow the link below, get on the bat phone, Patreon, and become part of the team. Open up a line one on one with me so that I can coach you to get you where you need to be. So you better subscribe and tick the bell because if you don't, I'm sending you to transport, son. So you're not the least prepared. The other thing is take some responsibility for your actions. If you're fail, if everyone's traveling at your speed, you need to buck up, cheer up, and get on with it. Don't sulk, because no one likes a sulker. No one. Team, your day starts with simple words. Hallway 11. You jump up, you run out with your sheets over your bed, trash your room, and run out prepared to start the day. That's it. 11 platoon, there is only one standard, and that's a double standard. Enjoy your day. Then you go into what the curriculum is. You understand that there is 12 weeks of training. You need to pass all of those, there'll be gates, and there'll be opportunities for you not to meet the standards, potentially fail, which again is your worst nightmare back squad, which means you go back several weeks and repeat that to give you the best chance of being a successful applicant in the Australian Army, the best small army in the world. If that happens, um, we'll talk about that in another video. Kapuka, you couldn't fail it if you try, but some of you have managed to do it. Innovation, you amaze me every day. But you need to get over it because you can't do anything to change it. Yeah, you can do it, believe me. You can't fail Kapuka, I've already told you that. The mindset that you need to have, but, is not that you are here for three months, I can be your buddy for three months, because at the end of the day, the person across from you might be going to your OT school with you. You are going for at least six months, nine months, 12 months of training with limited days off and no days in between Kapuka and your initial employment training. So it is very important in this modular system that you maintain your friendships, your alliances, your respect for each other. Because as soon as that starts to slip, you end up with one of those sections that no one wants to be part of that stands out like dog's balls in New York City. Bulls balls. And from there, the house of cards begins to fall and the back squads all seem to come from the same section. It happens all the time. Not all are you going to make it through, and I don't know how you achieve it. But some people manage to grasp defeat from the hands of victory. Despite the fact that they are surrounded by a herd, a hive, a shoal, a crowd of people and instructors designed to retrain and get you through those hard times. Team, as we said, Kapuka is not the real world. It's a dictatorship. It might as well be a jail with the instructors being the actual prison guards. Because that's what's really going on. Food is not there to be enjoyed. It's there to be scoffed out. It's a fuel. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. People are going to cover for you. People are going to put a hand on your shoulder. They're going to forgive you. But everyone should have the winning attitude. You want your section to come first in the platoon. Competition will make sure that it's impossible to fail at Kapuka. Every individual should be trying to be in the top half of their section, in the top half of the platoon. When you need some time out, all you need to do is go to the toilet. Go in there, sit down and have some time by yourself without your phone and just... Whew, hallway 11. Chill. That'll probably be after dinner when all the other activities are out the way. You can't go for just a shit or a piss whenever you want. They expect you to have some discipline. Don't roll your eyes. Don't fold your arms. Don't put your hands in your pockets. Don't answer back. Don't have excuses. Don't get caught whinging. 
Don't fight with your buddies. Don't dob on people. Tim, here's an activity for you. Why don't you consider that your Kapuka platoon, Elan platoon, okay, of all part of a crowd that didn't know each other, that was on a plane that has crashed in the mountains, and you need to survive the crash. Every single activity that happens at Kapuka is another step closer to you getting to civilization and surviving the crash with the team, a group of people that you never would have normally chosen. Everyone's motivation's the same, get out alive. So do that, whatever works for you, up here, formulate your plan in the toilet where we do the best thinking, and you'll be all good to go. In conclusion, you cannot fail Kapuka. You can't, it's designed to pass. They don't waste money on you. It's not reality. It's an institution. It might as well be a prison. Okay, all you've got to do is come in the top half on everything, share your bread, treat everyone like they're your best buddy, like they're a family member. You don't get to choose brothers and sisters, do you? And everyone gets out. It's Kapuka. I'm not going to go into what to take. You've got lists for that. Just understand you go from Kapuka to your IET training. Straight away. No gap. All the best. I might be there to see you march out. You don't want to be in Kapuka for winter, but it sucks in winter. And cold is always worse than heat. And I tell you now, anyone that tells you otherwise needs to go to Kapuka in winter. And they'll change their mind. RMC, they'll tell you the winter months are worse. Take it easy. Follow the footsteps of the Anzacs, and I'm proud of you. Mucho. Mucho respecto. Gonya, that's Kaz in the trenches. Out to you. See you later. Life sucks in Kapuka. With all seriousness, your family name is important. You're representing it. So why don't you do it some justice and write a letter with a pen to your grandparents and tell them thank you for making your parents who made you.